Uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Boy, they seem to be going really fast these weeks of summer. It won't be long and we'll be going into some other seasons of the church. So, here we are. It's a beautiful day. Um, we're at St. Anne's Church this time. And I decided we would sit with the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Our Lady of Guadalupe is Mother Mary, but she's in a special presence. And she's very special to our Mexican neighbors, but also to all Hispanic people and all Americans, as Our Lady of Guadalupe represents a lot of powerful things for us as Americans, as far as her patronage, that she looks up for us and she prays for us. So let's have, ask her, our Lady of Guadalupe, to pre please pray for us as we work on our Children's Liturgy of the Word for this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, I did something a little different today. I brought the little Father Michael with me, mini Father Michael, but I also brought all of the vestments, all the different colors that we have and use for the various purposes that I take just a minute to go through each and every one of them to see if you can remember when we would use them. The first one's kind of, uh, oh, very sparely used, very rarely used. This is, what color? Now I heard you say pink. No, 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 no. It's rose color. Rose color. And there are only two Sundays that we would ever use the rose colored vestments. One of them is in Advent, and the other one is during Lent. As we reach the end of the Advent season, preparing for Christmas, and we reach the end of Lent, preparing for Easter, there's a Sunday that we wear this to remind us that Advent is almost done and Christmas is almost here, or that Lent is almost done and Easter is almost here. So it's a special kind of celebratory color that we use. How about this color? Purple vestments or violet might be used. That word might be used as well. Purple or violet. When do we use that? One time is Advent. Remember the one Sunday in Advent we use the rose, but otherwise we're using the purple. And then there's Lent, and we use this through the weeks of Lent, other than that one week where we use the rose. So, rose, purple, and then we have the red vestments. When would Father wear red vestments? There's really a couple of times that are very prominent. One of them is it's used for the Sacrament of Confirmation because red is always associated with the Holy Spirit. So if there's a feast day that involves the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, for example, the coming of the Holy Spirit, we would wear red to honor the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit. And we use it for confirmation because that's when the Holy Spirit is confirmed in our people who are receiving the sacrament of confirmation. And then another time when red vestments are used, red vestments are used when there's a feast of a martyr. Do you know what a martyr is? A martyr is someone who gave up his life for the faith. Maybe someone who was asked to deny Jesus and said, no, I would rather die than deny Jesus. And when we celebrate them, we use the red vestments for that purpose. Okay, this one's white. Do you know when we use white? Oh, I heard someone say Christmas. That's exactly right. Christmas and Easter are the two big ones. Christmas and Easter, big celebrations where we want to show God that we're celebrating by the colors that we use at Mass. So that white, and we'll often have gold with it as well. Kind of a very celebratory situation. White is also used for major feast days. There's, a, there's several of them that we do throughout the year. 
whenever you come in and you see Father wearing white, hey, we're celebrating something really big. And the last one, you remember this one? This is ordinary time, right? So let's celebrate ordinary time. Let's best Father for this 19th Sunday in ordinary time. Let's put on his stole. And we'll put on his green chasuble. And there we are. Brother Michael and his stolen chasuble, dressed and ready for celebrating this 19th Sunday in ordinary time. Let's listen to the gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. May the message of this Holy Gospel be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and start back across the lake. But he stayed until he had sent the crowds away. Then he went up on a mountain where he could be alone and pray. Later that evening, he was still there. By this time, the boat was a long way from shore. It was going against the wind. It was being tossed around by waves. A little while before morning, Jesus came walking on the water toward his disciples. When they saw him, they thought he was a ghost. They were terrified and started screaming. At once Jesus said to them, Don't worry. I am Jesus. Do not be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come on, Jesus said. Peter then got out of the boat and started walking on the water toward him. But when Peter saw how strong the wind was, he was afraid and started sinking. Lord, save me, he shouted. Right away, Jesus reached out his hand and he helped Peter up and said, You surely don't have much faith. Why did you doubt? When Jesus and Peter got into the boat and the wind died down, the men in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, You really are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. And we say praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a pretty fun story, isn't it? Many years ago when I was uh, working out at the Davis Bessie power plant, I was doing shift work and I worked afternoons. And my partner that I worked with had a boat. And so what we would do, especially when we worked afternoons, we'd get up early in the morning and we'd go out fishing. We'd fish all day, and then we would uh, come in and go to work. We could shower at work and then be ready for our shift to, to uh, do our jobs. Well, one day we were out on the lake fishing, and some of you have been out on the lake, and maybe some of you have been there when a big storm comes in. Well, we were there and we looked out to the west and this big storm was coming. You could see the black sky and kind of the clouds and they were moving a bit. But of course, we were having fun fishing. So we decided we would wait till the last possible minute before we left. Now we waited a little bit too long. And as we started to go back in towards the pier, that storm came and hit. And just like the apostles had going on, the wind was blowing and the waves were going. And we were in this little boat and it had a little cap over it, so we had some cover. And there was a windshield, but the windshield wipers, you know, the things that wipe the water off the windshield, broke for some reason. So I opened up the little port in between and then I moved the windshield wiper 
so that the, my, the, my partner who was driving the boat could see as we went into shore. And it was really tough because we had to fight against the wind and the waves that were pushing us to get into the quiet area where the pier was to finally get to the point where we could dock the boat and tie it up safely. So I kind of understand a little bit about what the apostles went through and how they might have been a little bit scared. I was a little bit scared in that situation. But we got in okay, and we got back to work and everything all in good time. So everything came out okay, just like it did for the apostles. But here's the interesting thing. Did you hear in the story, they're out on the boat, and the boat's rocking around and being thrown by the wind and the waves. And then they see Jesus walking through all of this toward them. And they thought he was a ghost, so they were scared. If you ever, if you thought you saw a ghost, would you be a little scared? I think I might be. We'll see. But Jesus knew that right away, and he said, no, 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 no. I'm Jesus. Don't be afraid. And then we hear what Peter said. Jesus, if it is you, tell me to come out to you. So Jesus did. Come on down. And so Peter jumped out of the boat and started walking on water. Do you think that you could do that? If you could walk over the lake in a very deep spot and just walk over the water? I know I can't. But Peter did. Peter had enough faith in Jesus to take those first few steps before all of a sudden he lost sight of Jesus and saw the storm, and saw the waves, and thought, oh my goodness, what am I doing? And then he started to sink, and he said, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. He was probably a little scared at the time, right? So when he said that, Jesus grabbed him by the hand, and together they went back to the boat, to the safety of the boat. And Jesus asked him, why did you doubt? Why did you have so little faith? Wow, he had enough faith to get out there, though, didn't he? How does that look for you and I? Especially me, I, I couldn't get out of the boat. I would be afraid from the beginning. But we'll see. That's kind of a, a message for us in all these times when we're a little bit scared. I mean, think about this. Right now, we may be going back to school, or we may be going back to different things to where we might be able to catch that COVID virus. That's a little scary, isn't it? Maybe some dark night there's a lightning storm as you're trying to go to sleep. I know my kids were always afraid of storms. I always kind of liked them. I would like to go out onto the porch and watch the lightning and watch all the storm, and the wind, and the the clouds and everything. It's always a lot of fun for me. But my kids are always a little bit of afraid, afraid of these storms. Or maybe there's something in the middle of the night and you hear sounds like a bump in the night or something like that. And immediately we get a little bit afraid. What Jesus is telling us is in those times when you are afraid, we can do what Peter said, right? We can say, Jesus, I'm afraid. Lord, help me. And we can do it in different ways. Jesus, I'm afraid of that sound. Please be here to protect me. Jesus, I'm afraid of that lightning and storm. Please protect me and my family and my house. Or whatever it happens to be. Jesus, as I go back to school, please protect me against catching the virus. Or if I happen to get the virus, Jesus, please help heal me and make me better again. Jesus asks us and wants us to look to him, to look at him and look in his eyes and say, I need you, I need your help. And he will look right back at us and say, you know what? You're my brother, you're my sister. I'm happy to help you. And he'll take us by the hand. Maybe we don't see him or feel that grabbing by the hand is always there, always with us, and always protecting us. 
That's kind of a just awesome thing to think about, that we can have that protection. So always remember that ability to pray to Jesus when there's times of trouble and struggles in the world. One other thing that I wanted you to think about just a little bit, because we are in St. Anne's, I wanted to share with you one of those paintings that's on the ceiling at St. Anne's. And the first painting that you will see that if you're looking up and to the right is the painting of St. Francis of Assisi, one of our really good saints. And it's a real fun picture of him. You see some really neat things. And I'll be looking over at the painting rather than at you as I talk about it here. And I'll put the uh, picture on so that you can look at it. So here is the picture. Okay, right in the center, that person with his hand up in the air is St. Francis. St. Francis, if you look at his hand, he has like a, a cut or a wound there. And if you could see his feet, which you can't in this painting, he has wounds there too. He also has a cut in his side. And where, who else had those wounds? It was Jesus, wasn't it? When Jesus was on the cross, he had nail marks in his hands, he had nail marks in his feet, and he had a wound in his side where the soldier put the lance to make sure he was dead. St. Francis was a very holy man. He gave up, he was a very rich person when he started his uh, life, and he gave it all up and gave it all away so that he could serve Jesus building his church. And St. And Francis spent his whole life living poor and helping to build Jesus' church. So in, that, in this painting then, just to the left, or St. Francis' left, our right, we see one of his companions. I think it's, his name is Brother Juniper. Brother Juniper. Kind of an odd name, but it was one of the saints that went around with St. Francis, one of his partners that worked with him in his ministry. And then the next one to the right is Brother Giles. Brother Giles was a very uh, studious person, and you see in this painting he's depicted reading a book. Okay, on St. Francis's right, we see some of the faithful people that he preached to life just depicted there and then there's another one of the friars way out and to his left to our right when we look at that painting and in the background I think that's to represent the church where St. Francis first began preaching first began to rebuild he actually started to rebuild this church because some of the parts of the church were broken with the stones and things like that put in them in place and to rebuild it physically as well as rebuild it spiritually by his good life and by his preaching. He makes an awesome example. St. Francis, um, there's an awesome story about him in Assisi when he was doing his ministry there was a wolf that began to harm people, maybe kill their chickens and some of their animals in that city. And so St. Francis went outside the city, he found the wolf, and St. Francis had a special way with animals. He walked up to the wolf, and he said, Brother Wolf. He called different things his brothers and sisters, Brother Sun and Sister Moon, and I think Sister Earth, but he called the wolf. He said, Brother Wolf. Brother Wolf, you can't do this to our friends in town anymore. So what I would like you to do is stop killing their animals and scaring them and become a protector and a guardian of them. And in return, they will feed you. And that's what happened. The wolf walked, wolf walked back with St. Francis and he met the townspeople and he became their protector and they began to feed him. It's a really neat story about St. Francis. He's one of the great saints that 
really we should learn more about and learn to follow and understand his life and do things like he did. So there we are. Let's close with a blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and bring you peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God, Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Make it a great day and a great week. And I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye.